Okay, so today, what we are going to talk about is product concept testing. So in the first meeting, when I was showing you how to do home use testing, one of the options I was walking through packing slip testing, is I showed a concept test. Um, and I got several emails after that, if I could go into a little more detail and show how that would work with products. Okay, so that's what we're going to discuss today. My time talking should really be limited here to about 10 minutes. So it should be a pretty quick overview. And I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks as we go through this as well. All right, so you'll see here, um, I have gone ahead and created my product list. Now you'll notice that I have all of my products repeated. So I have four concepts, right? So if I were to write concept after this, it would make it a little more clear, but I'm testing ice cream sandwiches. And what I have going on here is I have four different ice cream sandwiches and I wanna be able to show a concept first, ask about that concept, and then I wanna show the product, the matching product and ask about that product, okay? Now you'll notice a few things here. I have my four concepts, vanilla, mini chocolate chip, rainbow sprinkles, and mint chip. And then I have my four products. And again, those are just repeated without the word concept after. And in fact, you don't even really need to repeat the word concept because they'll be divided by questionnaire. That being said, I'll explain how this works. Now what I wanna do is notice that I have a fully customized sample entry form here, right? So this is a feature that RegAid added to the application um, last year. Just a second, I'm getting a chat here. Um, so, so if you're on the Zoom meeting, you should be able to see my screen. Um, let me ask real quickly if somebody, Chris, I'm gonna unmute you. Chris, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, all right. So uh, Tina, I'm not sure why you can't see my screen, but the, the screen should be up on the Zoom meeting. So it is up and visible. So I have actually created a custom screen here. Chris, I'm leaving you on off of mute in case I need to ask you anything. So what I did here is I went ahead and opened this admin section so you guys can see how it's built. So in admin company settings, so you do need to be a company admin for this. If you don't have company admin rights, you can ask your company admin to either give you those rights um, and each, they can give them to you for a short period of time or not. So here, oh, so how do you get to the, to the coder? So that is the first setup screen when you set up, um, how do you get to this screen that I'm showing? So this screen is when you first set up a project in RegAid, it's the second screen that's visible. The first screen is you enter the details for your project. The second screen is the sample step. You can also get to it from your dashboard. Um, you can click quick add right here as well. Okay, so you can click quick add in this section as well. So in admin, when you're here, if you go into settings, then you can go into these custom fields and you'll notice that I have fully customized my regime, right? And the two things you'll see that I'm using in this test, I'm using this price field and this topping field. And these are text fields. And then I add this variable that allows me to use these fields as variables in my surveys. And you'll see how I use that. The second step that you need to do is actually add it to your sample form. So I create the custom field and then I've added price and topping to my sample form, okay? So now when I'm in here, you'll see I set a price for vanilla concept and I set a price for the vanilla product. And for something like mini chocolate chip, I've set a price. I've also set this topping one to mini chocolate chip. And you'll see how that comes into play in a second here. So let me go back to my project and I'm gonna go ahead and edit with this with the wizard and we'll walk through my project. So again, I've chosen to do this online as a packing slip test, just because most people right now are doing home use testing. So I thought it's good to just reiterate how to do this type of test. So the first thing you do is you set up this static URL, right, for everybody. So for everybody taking this survey, the URL that they're going to use is surveys.regaid.net forward slash RJD, which is my company's token. Everybody, every company has their own unique token here. And it ranges from three to seven characters, depending on the company, as I've set them up. And then it has the unique product identifier here, the unique test identifier, okay? I'm gonna click next. 
Next step is my participants. So again, all I'm doing on this step is I'm entering the number of participants that I want to participate in this test. Now I've gone ahead and went one step further and on demographics, I've actually set up two different demographics here. What's cool about this is I set up these demographics. So I click this create button, I type in these demographics and that is going to allow me to run my data by these demographics after the person has filled out the questionnaires. Now, in order to build out a demographic, when I am not using Reg A to recruit or uploading participants, I need to use a non-sample questionnaire with single select, single select questions, and I'll show you how that works. Now then what you do is you map the question. So you can see that I have mapped that question, are you a heavy, medium, or light user, to a question in my demographic questionnaire called how often do you eat ice cream? Now what's really cool about this is you can go back and you can say, ah, weekly is not really a heavy user, weekly is a medium user. And you can actually change that even after you've collected data for the test, okay? The key here is make sure you click the next button when you're done and it updates all the numbers for you. Okay, and I did the same with gender. Schedule, again, all you're doing on the schedule step is you're making the survey active during these test dates. We click next and now the questionnaires and I'm gonna spend a little bit of time here and a little bit of time on the design block. So you can see that I have actually set my concept up as a single sample questionnaire. I wanna be able to stat test between vanilla, mini chocolate chip, rainbow sprinkles, and mint chip, okay? For product, I set up a separate questionnaire. I wanna be able to stat test between vanilla, mini chocolate chip, rainbow sprinkles, and mint chip. The other thing you can see I've done here is I've set my concept up as a skip start, meaning that the individual sitting in the booth does not need to click anything in order to start the survey. And I've set my product questionnaire up as confirmed because I want to serve them a specific product. I want that person to confirm that they have the right product in front of them before they continue. Okay. I also have this demographics questionnaire that I discussed. So I'm just going to show you that I am able to build those demographics that I showed you two steps ago through these single select questions that I have built into the demographics questionnaire. Notice that it only works today on single select questions or drop down select questions, okay? And you can see both of those here. And they are single select. A quick easy way to tell is these are circles for choices. If it's a multi-select question, it'll actually be squares for choices. So a quick glance can tell you what type of questions those are. All right, so now let's look at our concept questionnaire. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on add questions. Now you'll notice I just put some Latin text here, but you'll see all of the questions with this little Y fork here, Y yellow fork in the left hand corner, mean that that individual question has a trigger. So if I click on this question, you'll notice that I set up logic that says only show this image if the sample is vanilla concept, right? So what I've done here is I've created this concept questionnaire that's going to automatically show when the person's ready to observe it. And it is only going to show the image for the correct corresponding sample that I'm evaluating or this correct corresponding concept that I'm evaluating. So here you can see includes any of these vanilla, includes any of these mini chocolate chip, includes any of these rainbow sprinkles, so on and so forth, right? The other thing I've done is I have enabled myself to customize my question on purchase interest based on price and based on the sample name. And let's say the serving size was different. I could have actually added another variable called serving size and entered that as a variable here as well. So you have lots of options if you customize, again, through admin settings, if you customize your custom fields and add it to the sample form, your survey becomes much more um, dynamic than if you don't take those steps. Now you'll see here under variables, I am able to pull any of my choices that I have added to my custom form here and set of variables. So here's price, here's topping, here's the sample name. So now it will say, how likely would you be to purchase 
vanilla concept, right? That's why I didn't have the name concept. I added concept to try to help out. If it was available for sample price, $1.99, to 29 et cetera, for a five ounce serving where you normally shop. And then we'd be able to stat test the purchase interest across these questions. And you can, of course, add more questions to this as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save and close this. Now let's look at our product questionnaire. So in our product questionnaire, I've gone a couple of steps further. So ignore the first part, I just showed you, that's how we set up the concept. We have some instructions, eat at least half of the product in front of you, select the phrase which best describes your opinion. And now I've added a couple of other things here, right? So one, I've added the purchase interest, just like in our other questionnaire. And if we scroll down, you'll notice I have vanilla flavor. Now my vanilla flavor jar is only going to show for my vanilla question, my vanilla product, my mini chocolate chip product, and my rainbow sprinkles product. Those all have vanilla as my base part of my quest, part of my sandwich, right? You'll notice mint is only for the mint chip questionnaire. Now I could have, if I felt like stat testing between vanilla and mint flavor, again, I could have added a variable to my system called flavor and I could have put sample underscore flavor, flavor, and it would have automatically input the vanilla or the mint flavor as needed, right? So there's lots of things you can do to make your questionnaire more dynamic here as well. If we go down a little bit, you'll see this is amount of sample topping, right? And so that's going to automatically fill in our sample topping. Now, what I wanted to show here is I should actually add sample logic because vanilla doesn't have a topping. Only mini chocolate chip and rainbow sprinkles actually have a topping, right? Because mini chocolate chip has mini chocolate chips and rainbow sprinkles has rainbow sprinkles. So you can add that trigger for those individual products and it will read in the sample here. Then we have how well did this product fit the sample name concept you observe. So the vanilla concept, the mini chocolate chip concept, et cetera. Okay, so we have our questionnaire. Our last step is our design block. And this is the, the part um, where RegAid really handles this easily, right? So this is what your survey is going to look like when you step into it. You have your eight products. RegAid always builds your Williams Square design. Each product is going to be evaluated in each fixed and relative position an equal number of times. That is absolutely not what you want here, right? So what we wanna do is we wanna customize our design to have it make sense for what we're doing. Right, so we can do that here. So here's my vanilla product. I am going to link it to the end. See how the end turns blue? I'm gonna link it to the end of the vanilla concept questionnaire. And now you'll see those two products are linked everywhere. So the person will do the vanilla concept, which is going to start automatically. Then they're going to be served the vanilla product. Okay. And I'm gonna do this with all my products. So I'm gonna take my mint chip and put it at the end of my mint chip product. I'm gonna take my rainbow sprinkles product and put it at the end of my rainbow sprinkles concept. And I'm gonna take my mint chip and put it at the end of my mint chip. Now what you'll see happens is RegAid will now have our four blocks blocked together, right? So we have one five, this is three seven, this is two six, and this is uh, four eight, right? Now let's say, you go, okay, well, everything else is quote unquote fancier, has more flavor. I want vanilla blocked first, right? So we can actually take vanilla, drop it in the first position, and now every single person will evaluate the vanilla products before they evaluate mini chocolate chip, rainbow sprinkles, and mint chip, okay? The other thing we wanna do is we wanna ask our demographics somewhere. So I can either drag it in the last position, I can link it to the first product, there's lots of things I can do with it. But here, let's just say I want an easy warm up, so I put it at the beginning of the test for everybody, right? And now what you'll see is I have my design where the person's going to do the demographics. They're going to complete my vanilla, my base questionnaire, my base product questionnaire. And then they're going to evaluate the other products in a sequential monadic balance block design, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click Approve. 
I'm going to copy this link just so I can easily start my survey. And I'm going to go ahead and finish my wizard. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this survey. I'm going to launch it and press launch. And I'm going to open up a new incognito window here. And surveys.regid.net forward slash regid forward slash prod con and enter. Okay. So from here, what's going to happen is Regid is going to ask me to enter my verification code. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and begin. And now you'll see that, well, I chose to have a study participant agreement. If you have a study participant agreement, you have to click I agree here. Now we're going to do our demographics, right? Uh, I probably eat ice cream every two to three weeks. We'll click next. I don't know why I always feel the need to answer the questions as though I'm the one doing it. Now I'm going to do my concept, right? How likely would you be to purchase vanilla concept? Clearly, I should change the name. If it was available for $1.99 for a five ounce serving, right? Now I'm going to do my next. Now I'm going to actually do my sample for vanilla, right? So I'm going to serve my, sam my vanilla sample, and now I'm going to complete my sample questionnaire. Right, like very much, of course they do. It's an ice cream sandwich, who wouldn't? Just about right. Vanilla flavor, just about right. How well did this product meet, fit the vanilla concept? Fits very well, and next. And we can go on and on through our questionnaire here. Now, I'm gonna choose not to, but what I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and run over to my results here really quickly. So from my project, I can click um, on open live results. I like to open it in a new window. That's just me and the way I use RedJade. So from here, you're going to go to your results and product concept fit here. We only have one person worth of data, but you'll see my data is automatically sorted. So I'm gonna get my concept data and it's gonna show my data against each other with purchase interest, right? I'm gonna get my product data and this is going to show my product data against all four products when I'm done collecting data, right? So with that, that is an overview of product concept testing, how you'd use RedJ to do that. I also showed you how you can easily add variables to both your sample form and your questionnaire and make your surveys more dynamic, as well as customizing your design block quickly and easily to allow you to easily link products together and either have a balanced block design or serve products in a specific order. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. And if anybody has any questions, I am available. If you feel more comfortable chatting them to me, please feel free. I'll stay online until people stop asking